Hey, sweetie pie, did you know that every coin has a leader with founding principles? And most people in crypto don't understand. And it's really important for you to understand because you need to have an edge over everybody else. I have an edge because I understand it. And that's why you're watching this video, my YouTube, you follow my Twitter, because this is what you're about to hear. No one speaks like the way I'm gonna speak to you now. Every single coin, even Bitcoin, has a leader with founding principles. Humans, we belong to tribes. We love being a part of a community. Every community has a leader. We love to follow. 95% of people love following by default. If you even look at the leaders themselves, they probably are followers in other aspects of life as well. Starting with Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin is the most interesting and we're gonna start with it because the Bitcoin maxis don't speak about Satoshi that much. That's how you know Bitcoin has truly infected the world. The mind virus is out. Isn't that amazing? That after all these years, they don't speak about Satoshi much. And you think, what is the relevance of that? It's big relevance, man. Because when you speak about a leader, you can then bring criticisms. You can then focus your the, the bad vibes. You can target the weaknesses. You can put holes in arguments, like a torpedo. But when it's truly decentralized, you can't. There is no head of the snake that you can cut. Okay, the most powerful people in the world know this. So this is why Bitcoin is very powerful. We're gonna go through all these other coins and by the end of it, you're gonna see some edges and you're gonna see why some coins went up, some coins probably won't go up in the future, okay? So obviously we know Bitcoin's diminishing returns, but the story of Satoshi, so if you're listening now, you probably weren't around with me. You know, I wasn't around before 2018, 2017 and beyond, like the early days. Bitcoin forum talk had Satoshi. Satoshi has core principles. You go to the forums. He believed in free money for the world. He released Bitcoin with the first timestamp. Chancellor is on the brink of the second bailout. You all remember that news article. So important. He released Bitcoin to the world in the depths of the GFC because he knew, he goes, damn man, I need to release a public good for the world so everybody has decentralized money. And if they want it, they can make something of it. And why the Satoshi law is so strong is he did not enrich himself. He mined 1 million Bitcoin. He released it out into the wild and he sold nothing, nothing. It was a complete 100% charity donation to humanity itself. The story is literally, it is like Jesus, the Messiah coming, freeing the world, died for our sins. It is that same story. It's played out in a different way. Okay? So this is why the Satoshi principles are so strong. It's, hey, I'm going to release a public good to the world. Blockchain. Go listen to what Hal Finney describes technology as. Okay? We don't know who Satoshi is, but if it was someone to do with Hal Finney, you know, Hal Finney says, the technology can be made to liberate man instead of punishing him. Or her, right? So technology, that's what he's talking about. The blockchain, we can be used to enhance our lives. And they did. So that's why it's so powerful. Bitcoin maxis, religious idolization, they get so tingly when they speak about this, okay? And we're gonna go through the other leaders. So that is the core Bitcoin principle. This is why Bitcoin's lasted so long. This is why I have so much conviction Bitcoin will be around in 2030. It's not going to zero. This story is too powerful. Jesus' teachings, 2,000 years on, man, it's still going on. 2,000 years on. And yes, I will say, say Jesus performed miracles. I believe this was a Bitcoin. I think this was a miracle, releasing blockchain to the world. Nobody knew this thing would have value. They say it is even a miracle that Bitcoin hit $1, by the way, up here. They say that was a miracle. Andreas Antonopoulos says, you know, we were even like, the biggest news story was that Bitcoin hit a dollar. You know, when this is, you know when he was saying that? to make everyone bullish when everything was crashing. He's like, man, the story isn't that Bitcoin's down 90%. The Bitcoin is that we we hit $1. Like that's the real story, okay? So, Bitcoin, that's why this that's why the law is so strong. It's going to keep perpetuating. It's got so much legs to grow, okay? Every founder has principles. 
Do you know what they are? 99% of people don't because everybody's just looking at their one coin. They found one principal, one leader, and they've said, that's it, everyone else is wrong, that's it. But we're not here to judge. I'm here to find an edge because we're here to win, okay? We are here to win. We want maximum reward, okay? You have a family. You might be struggling. Brothers, sisters, mum and dad, kids. You want to be financially well off. You don't want to be a debt slave for the rest of your life, okay? You want to escape the rat race. We have to make these decisions. We have to front run the crowd. If we don't understand this, we understand nothing. And then it's literally a lottery ticket. We are just going to pick one crowd and we're going to hope and pray that we are the winner. No, I'm not going to live in that world. Okay? We're here for answers. Let's go on. So, Ethereum, right? Rank number two. Rank number two. Probably going to be number one. Ethereum, founded by Vitalik, okay? Okay? Vitalik, young, young at heart. By the way, quickly back to Satoshi. You know, people who were around in early Satoshi days, they say the way he typed on the internet and the expression to use, they felt he was young at heart. Young at heart, okay? So if you are for it, young at heart, I want you to think about that. Young at heart means not just maybe in age, but it was a spirit of we can take a big challenge on. Because you know when you're young, you're so optimistic, you don't know the limitations, you don't even believe in gravity. You're like, I can go for the roof, man, and the sky, and the universe, the cosmos. And as you get older, you're like, man, there's too much restrictions, and you know, it's a constant battle, it's gonna weigh us down. Young at heart, man, keep fighting, okay? These messages permeate through the whole community, and they keep going down, okay? They keep going down into the average low-level person. Same as in a company. When the CEO is strong, everybody else is strong. When the CEO is corrupt, everybody in the industry is corrupt, okay? In the, in, in the company. So the same thing. So let's go Ethereum. Vitalik founded at 17 years old, man. What were you doing at 17? Okay? I could barely try, tie my shoelace. So Vitalik, 17 years old, he's cranking away, wearing this cute unicorn picture, wearing this cute cow suit, bull, pretty, you know, it's cool. So Vitalik's obviously a genius. What are Vitalik's core principles? His core principles are, so go listen to any, I think the video with that star, dance, um, ah, whatever, you know, when, when Vitalik speaks about Ethereum, he goes, Ethereum is a general purpose blockchain, right? You know, with smart contract capability, okay. So that is, he always describes a general purpose blockchain. So you think, oh, well, it's just a description. No, why does he choose to write general purpose blockchain? It's because Vitalik's principles are he does not like nationalism, okay? He doesn't like borders. He doesn't like that, okay? So other people don't like borders, but how do you approach life like that? Some people, you're gonna find out later, have the let's hold hands approach. Let's not fight, let's just hold hands, okay? And let's hug each other, okay? Even though you're stinky, you're smelly, you haven't showered, let's hold hands, okay? We know the world can't really operate like that. Because there's always competition, people always want to take you down. Vitalik, that's why Ethereum is so successful. Vitalik does not have that idea of, let's all hold hands, let's all be kind. No, no, no. He says, I'm going to build a blockchain, we're going to do it right. I'm going to do it right, and here's my vision, okay? General purpose means I'm going to release a blockchain for the world, super decentralized, with the smart contracts. Not as decentralized as Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, we get it, but it's as decentralized as you can make it, given the circumstances. He wants it to be a public utility, right? So for a peanut brain like me, okay, we're gonna get a little peanut here, okay. Apple, App Store, Apple, App Store equals centralized and controlled, okay? Ethereum apps, look, oh, it's, it's DAP, right? Decentralized application, but Ethereum App Store equals decentralized plus general purpose plus open plus public good, right? So. In university economics, this is economics. When I say public good, doesn't mean it's good for the public. It just means it's something that can be consumed by the public, okay? A public good is like street lights. I can't control you soaking up the street light and you can't control it for me. Also, another public good is like radio, okay? Everybody can tune in, okay? You can't control the radio wave you get. So that's what he wants Ethereum to be, general purpose for everywhere, international. You even notice, right, go to the different... The, the labels of Ethereum updates, he goes through each city of the world, Shanghai, and all these other ones, right? 
This is not, this is intentional, man. This is not like accidental. Oh, let's use this or use that. This is the core of his beliefs. This is why Ethereum is absolutely probably going to flip Bitcoin and going to be number one, right? Just because of what it does. But you can also see why Bitcoin and Ethereum deserve to be number two. Okay. They have like dropped maximum number of borders in both their core principles. Okay. So this is what Ethereum has. This is what Vitalik has. We're going to go to other people's principles and you just, you're going to compare. Okay. You're going to compare. Now, some comments Vitalik has also made. He's also said, all right, monkey JPEGs equals disgrace. Okay. He's basically said one of the worst disgraces is monkey JPEGs. But why? Why is he saying that? He's saying that because he is going through all this effort to make a public good. And then he's like, damn, you people are taking up this limited decentralized blockchain space and you're putting it to use for JPEGs. <laughs> like you got it up. Woohoo, JPEG. All right, so that, that's why he's like, damn, man, like we want to scale and everything, but you guys are making our job harder because you're freaking JPEGs, man. You love your JPEGs too much. So the NFTs, the NFT JPEGs. So what is like, if you translate that, so you're listening, obviously you're listening to me, you can't get this anywhere. All these other media websites, all these other influencers, they're just seeing dollar signs when they have their audience, okay? Trading referral links, ICO pump and dumps. They're not doing the hard work like me. I'm here to tell you, okay? Vitalik, right? He attached a monetary premium to Ethereum. Monetary premium is in the coding, okay? That's the intent. He wants Ethereum as a collateral to go up, right? People to buy and hold, okay? So... That, that's important, by the way. Some other coin founders, they say, we don't care about the coin price. It can go down. For example, Flow, right? There are other coins as well where the founders say, oh, we don't really care about the, the coin price because we want it to be super cheap for everyone to use, okay? I think Jack Levin said that for Zen as well. So that is no, you, you can't have that. You don't get adoption when number goes down. You got adoption when number goes up. It, see, Vitalik, see, because he's like a, 160 IQ genius. He doesn't say that. But I, after listening through hundreds of hours, I'm like, oh, he says it just in a different way. You know, he says monkey JPEGs are a disgrace. And he does certain implementations into the code with the developers and like how he writes articles and how he wants them to do stuff. He basically is helping number go up, you know, with the burning and all this other stuff, but without saying, hey, I want number go up. He's doing everything in his power to put out the thought, I want number go up without actually saying it. And if you understand what's going on, that's why this is a blue chip asset that is significantly underpriced, but we're gonna do better than that, okay? So, you know, if you've got like $10 million, you wanna allocate 3 million and you don't wanna risk it too much, throw it in ETH. Obviously you know that, okay? But most people, you don't have 10 mil, 3 mil to invest. You're probably investing with like a small clip under 200K. If, you, if you're under 250K, that's your small clip, you ain't gonna really bink it too much with Ethereum, okay? So you can do well, but you're not gonna bink it. Okay, so Ethereum, monkey JPEGs is great. So we're understanding what's going on here. Now that Ethereum has killed it, by the way, now Ethereum has done super, super, super well, which is like how well, okay, from the launch. So the ICO was like, you know, 10 cents or what? No, it was 30 cents. ICO was down here, okay? ICO was down here. Let's go to 31 cents. This is a big fat number. There you go. 4,000X from the ICO, okay? Now that we're up 4,000X, right? Actually, and above, let's go check what it hit at the top. It hit at the top, it hit 15, oh my God, is that number right? 15,000 X. Okay, so the Ethereum hit 15,000 X at the top, okay? And you know, it's decentralized money. Now there's been a shift in their focus for Ethereum, okay? The shift is now, hey, we don't have to focus too much on the ETH price. Now let's do layer two Ethereum, right? So it's okay, so what he's basically, he's basically telling the market, right? Number one priority is not number go up for Ethereum in the next five years, okay? Num what the only number they wanna go up is the number of users, even on layer two. So they don't mind, so there's e his ETH, right? ETH, and then, and then layer twos, okay? Layer, layer two Ethereum are other Ethereum related chains right, that help Ethereum scale, okay, and they post transactions to Ethereum for its security. So the Ethereum main one, and there's layer two, okay, there's Ethereum, and there's layer two. So he's saying, we don't mind making upgrades so that more money flows into layer two, and when we used, to, we used to get like, you know, heaps of money flowing into ETH, we don't mind if it's only like this much. We don't mind. 
Okay, and we don't mind if money flows like this. We don't mind. He's he said this to the market. He's basically said we've already won and I'm now thinking about the next step because he's such a visionary, okay? So this is all about Bitcoin, all about Ethereum. Their leaders have core principles. Are you paying attention? Okay, Elon Musk Doge. What's Elon's vision, right? Elon in crypto, his vision, right? His vision is he loves memes and he always says, you know, we should always go for the most fun and entertaining outcome. Memes. Doge is the meme. How powerful was he to pump this? 230x. Very powerful, okay? This is Elon Musk's core principle. The people who buy into Doge are there for the funness. The fun speculation. What if it hits a dollar? What if we take over the world? What if we actually make it as collateral and payments and banks hold it? It wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, it would be really funny, okay? So that's why I think the Doge will hit a dollar. Okay, I think the Doge will hit a dollar. However, because this was such an enormous pump of 232x, I think, and and Tesla is locking the rocks a bit. I think, like, I won't be surprised if we see, you know, a bit of, a bit of sideways, you know, a bit of sideways. And when we least expect it, something happens and we go to a dollar. By the way, this is a long time. Remember, these are monthly charts. Monthly is gonna be painful, but you understand, okay? You understand. You're not here for the price prediction here. You're here to understand that Doge has a CEO and a leader now. His name is Elon. He's in charge of Doge, okay? Doge, Elon, Elon, Doge. You think the same thing, right? That's his message. Let's make it fun. Let's take over the world. He actually posts memes of Doge like literally taking over the world. Wouldn't that be funny, right? Wouldn't it be funny if more people knew Doge than like Coca-Cola one day in the future? That would be very funny, wouldn't it? Especially because I was telling everyone to buy it specifically because it has a picture of a dog and everybody was calling me a peanut brain. And I said, yeah, I do have a peanut brain, okay? I'm not even gonna argue with that. But you can't deny that it has a picture of a dog on a logo, okay? And people try to deny it. People said, no, this means nothing. I go, dude, this picture of the dog on that logo means everything. It means everything, okay? So, leaders, are they speaking? Are you listening, okay? All leaders are speaking, okay? And they're speaking the same language. They want to recruit more people. These are founders, you know. Maybe 2,000 years ago, we'd all be part of cults. Literally cults. <laughs> because these guys are really good at manipulating people, right? For good and for bad. And they know exactly how to do it. And obviously, these are high, highly skilled entrepreneurs. So, Charles, he has founding principles that he believes in, right? He wants decentralization, okay? He does not care about number go up super high right now. He always says, we want to take our time. He's always seen pictures. We've got this eagle here. He's seen pictures like meditating. He's taking pictures of like him on the farm, right? He doesn't take pictures of him like with the Rolex and flashing and all this other stuff, okay? So he appears, that's why he has such a wide network, man. That's why Cardano hit a hundred billion market cap up here, okay? So one, it has unit bias because it's a very low price coin. You know, it's not like Ethereum, thousands of dollars anymore. It has an advantage there. And Cardano's always talking about like Africa, third world countries. Go listen to the teachings of Cardano, um, Charles, and he always says, look, I don't care about making some like white boy in the middle of America super rich, right, because of DeFi. I don't care about that, right? He says, I want to help third world countries. I want to help people who can barely get water access. We want to help them with a decentralized cheap card, um, cheap blockchain, and then they can learn how to de be developers, and then they can increase the GDP of their countries and their villages, all right? That's why, go listen to everyone in Cardano. They love this vision so much. Help the world, change the world, woo! Okay, this permeates through all of Cardano. That's why people in Cardano were like, we're professional, we have a righteous cause, you know? We're going to the future, we're, we're looking after the people without a voice. That's Charles Target says, okay, we are looking after the people who can't even look after themselves, okay? So, you're listening now, and I just, I wanna remind you that there is no right and there is no wrong, okay? There only is, there's messages, out, there's signals out there, okay, messages, it's how we interpret them, okay? I'm not saying one is right, one is wrong. I'm not saying Charles on the farm is better than what you're gonna see later, Richard Hart with Rolexes. I'm not saying that. Our goal is to find underpriced assets. Our goal is to be convicted with crypto going up, all right? Which going up means more people using, and we know with more people using, they spend a bit of their dirty fiat, okay? That's what our goal is. So Gavin Wood with Polkadot. Do you wanna ride on this vision? Gavin, if you listen to interviews with Gavin, okay, Gavin's a very nice guy. He doesn't seem like someone who would put a knife to your throat, right? Very, very, very opposite. He, he, I get the impression he's more of a, 
let's hold hands and sort things out, okay? And if you even if you don't believe me, right, look at how the structure of polka dot is actually look how this is the P for polka dot. Look how the structure of polka dot is actually set up. Okay, firstly, there is very high amount of governance in this. Everything requires a DAO. Everything. Super voting everywhere. This has got to be approved, you know, like you want to tie your shoelace. You need approval You want to go have a shower again this week for the second time you need approval Gavin set it all up. All right, so this is almost like it's decentralized But like super decentralized which is weird But then what ends up happening is because it's like super decentralized No one can really make a decision for themselves So the few people who can collude end up ruling everything anyway, it's kind of weird like that, you know, like it's it's like if you try to make everyone break even with power, it still consolidates anyway, and then you get to the, the original problem we have, okay? So it's very interesting. So as well, Polkadot also has Kusama. Kusama is a testnet, okay? Kusama is a testnet. So if Gavin was cutthroat, he would like just ask Kusama. Kusama wouldn't even exist. He'd be like, get out of here, you're a testnet. We want all the money to flow to Polkadot. We don't want any, any money to flow to Kusama. So... Okay, so there's dot and then there's KSM, okay? I want you guys to know this because this is super important. You are seeing coins right now in crypto. People are gonna launch circular Ponzi's where they go, hey, we've got coin A, but if you go to coin B, you can buy coin C and then stake it for coin D, okay? I want you to know that that is not bullish, that is bearish, okay? People need one unified vision and one unified focus, one ticker, one purpose, okay? One ticker, one purpose. We, when there's like three or four coins, like, oh, what are you going to change it again next year? Like, I'm telling you now, man. Me and you, you and I, we are passionate about crypto. We're in this 24-7. We know all the coins. But people, they go out, you know, they feed their pet duck. They go out to the park, yeah? They go have a sandwich. They go to work. You know, they watch some TV shows, and they check crypto in like three months. And like, wait a minute. Was this coin or that coin? Huh? What Was it logo pink or purple? What happened? Like, that's that's the that's the critical part. That's that's like seventy percent of people. Okay, that's not the minority. That's the majority of people like that. You can't expect people to feed you economic energy, which is basically put USDC or ETH into your pool of money or Bitcoin and actually put like real money in and make your number go up. You can't expect them to do that when you're constantly confusing them. It doesn't work like that. All right, it does not work. So, unfortunately, Polkadot has Kusama. It's a thorn in the side. And look, it stems down from Gavin's approach to it. Gavin's is, let's all work together, right? Gavin is a tech guy. Tech people work in teams, okay? Yes, there's, there's everyone can work together. Everyone's got a role. Everyone's got a purpose, right? He's a very smart guy. So you've got to think about the background behind him. He, of course, is an experienced person. But you know there are a lot of flops out there in life. <laughs> you, can, you can't put them in the same room as you. You just know that for 100 people... Five are going to be flops. You know that, right? You know that. The 95, you're beautiful, good heart, good soul, okay? You're just, you're doing your hardest. You're a man or woman, you're doing your hardest in life to do good for society. We know the bottom five are just trash. We know, no matter what you do. Don't, don't even give them voting rights. Like, just get them out of here. No one cares, right? We know that, okay? So, Gavin's, his approach to this isn't taking that into consideration, Okay? Consider this to someone who you think is like independent and neutral like Vitalik where go look at the language he does if people try to bag him out He's like get out of here like you're a, I didn't care about this cause or that cause I don't give a shit He's like he's like oh, no, we're not all holding hands. No, this is how we're gonna do it It's a boss move man. This is a boss move. Okay, same as Charles same as Taj same as Elon Okay, so are you surprised though? He, dot right had a lot of VCs because Gavin probably trusted a lot of VCs. I can, you can see. Actually, I'm not even going to imply here. It's true. Polkadot didn't go up too much because it had a lot of VC insiders who just dumped on us. And it kind of makes sense that they were able to do it. Because someone who's as smart as him, he probably does not see the bad side in people enough. And he probably trusted them too much. And now we only got a 10x and we're like down with everything else. But look, look how much we only went up. Woohoo! 10, 11x. It, it, they haven't produced much compared to, say, Polygon or BNB. Solana obviously kicked off. These other coins, Phantom went to the moon. Like, you have all these. Polkadot was a laggard. Why? Well, now you know why. Every coin has a leader and behind them are founding principles. So this kind of describing how this thing floats down, man. It floats down. I'm not here to say right or wrong. 
We're not here to judge. I'm just saying this explains it. You, we're looking for reasons why. You've got some advanced reasons why, some really deep reasons why. Charlie Lee, okay? Charlie Lee comes across as lazy to me. Lazy. No updates for Litecoin, barely any tweets, somehow makes it onto MSNBC, gets the ticker logo up, like the bare minimum. He, he rem, I don't know why, I could be wrong. He reminds me of that guy in school who's like really lazy, but like reads the textbook like once for 30 minutes and still gets like, you know, 93 out of 100 in the exam. He's that guy, but he's lazy. You know, you can only get so far in life doing this. He doesn't shill hard enough. And of course, I mean, everyone knows, he literally dumped the top and tweeted about it. Big mistake, okay? So remember, please, my message again. I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just saying what happened to the market, okay? So firstly, Ethereum was dumped by Vitalik. He dumped at the top here, okay? Ethereum was dumped at the top. He also dumped here, right? He also dumped it, let's, let's go to three day, okay? You, you think I'm making this up? He actually, he dumped, okay? He dumped here and he dumped here, all right? Vitalik dumped. But the market didn't interpret it as really bad. They're like, well, you know, we're up 2,000x. Yeah, I guess you can dump. That's how people interpret it that as, okay? But when Charlie Lee dumped, okay, because Litecoin went bad after that, Right, so not only did it drop 94% with Ethereum, you know, Ethereum from that low did over 50x. Litecoin from a low barely touched 17x, and now it's back down here, okay? So Litecoin's not getting adopted. You can't do any yield on it, you can't do anything on it, okay? There's no people joining it. So the market interpreted this as, oh, not only are you lazy and you suck, but you dumped on us, okay? So this is the signal of the market. Are you surprised that Litecoin's becoming more irrelevant every day? Are you surprised? It's a test net to Bitcoin. So you understand, so Charlie doesn't, I know Charlie's not even the real guy behind it anymore, but that's the face that we all know. And that's the most important. What does the average person think? The average person thinks this guy's not a fighter. If you are not going to fight for your coin, people don't want to follow you. That's it. Okay. So yes, people know I have a peanut brain. They do. But they also know I will put on the gloves and I will fight until I die. And that's it. I would rather die fighting Okay, destroyed, brutalized, then just cower in a corner and roll over, okay? So who do you wanna go behind? Do you wanna go behind the guy who's like, oh, well, I'll assess everything and if it's not a good fight, I'll back down. Do you wanna go for that guy? Or you wanna go with the guy who's literally just gonna go 100%, we don't care, no challenge is too big. I want you to think about your perception of Charlie Lee compared to Satoshi, young at heart, we're gonna, like the government is taking on the people. We're not here to fight the government. We're here to give everyone a better solution. Fight, 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 let's go. Think about that principle. Think about Vitalik going like, I don't care what you say, your JPEGs are trash. We are going to continue doing this. Smart contracts for the world, general purpose blockchain, let's go, okay? Think about Elon. Elon saying memes are real. Well, yeah, you don't think I'll do it? Test me, right? I dare you to test me. Just think about that. Charles saying like, I don't care about making that like middle class white boy rich. I don't care. These people need help and we're going to keep going. And Cardano's changing the future. Think about that strength of that message, okay? Now think about but Gavin thinking like, oh, well, Kazama, yeah, you can hang around. You're a test net, even though you're sucking away our energy. And think of Charlie Lee like, yeah, well, Charlie Lee saying Ethereum's basically should be worth zero. He did say that, by the way, that it's useless and it's going to go to zero because it's not super decentralized. So we don't want to hear that, man. Stop bagging out other coins. We want to say, tell us Litecoin is the second coming of the Messiah. And if you don't buy it, you are going to be cursed for 100 days. That will probably get more people to buy Litecoin than what's going on right now. Okay. So, Chainlink. What is Sergey's beautiful message? Okay. What is Sergey's... <laughs> this is Martin Shkreli, by the way. Oh, the memes are so good. Sergey's vision is the world of the future will be applications everywhere, okay? Like Uber, okay? There will be Ubers and menu logs, applications everywhere, and they will actually be smart contracts. Right now, contracts are not smart on Ethereum. They're just contracts. They can't do much, okay? His vision is that with all these apps, they're gonna change the world. Everything around us will be modified, connected digitally, and it's all going to be made smart with chain link nodes, okay? Chain link 
nodes. We're going to get the logo to enhance the friendship. Here we go. Okay, there's a logo here. Chain link nodes. How are these? No how are they going to be smart? They're all going to be like, hey, let me grab data from Chainlink from here. Let me grab data from Chainlink. All of them are going to be grabbing data. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to say, this circle right here, okay, let's go. In this, in here, these are data points, okay? This is different nodes out there who are providing data. This could be our public health records, okay? This thing can be income tax brackets, Okay, so actually I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna write this down. Public health records, public health records, right? Because you don't believe me. I know you don't believe me. You're doubting me right now. So I'm gonna tell you this right now. This is exactly how the future is gonna work. And this is this is um, Sergey's vision. So what did I say here? So income tax brackets. Okay. So two pieces of information here. Someone can make an app to go. Hey, I have a service I want to provide to the world. I want to provide psychological, uh, I wanna, I'm a psychologist, okay? I wanna give you consulting. Are you depressed? I wanna help you out, okay? This is my donation to the world. And I'm also trying to like sell myself, okay? So, but I don't wanna just give this out as a coupon to everyone, okay? What I wanna do is, I want to provide this service for free only to people with the lowest income tax bracket and people who have like had cancer before, cancer patients who are doing it tough. You can't do that right now. You can't. But you can in the future make an application where you go, hey, if you, you know, you're doing it tough in life and you're in a low income tax bracket, guess what? You will be able to come to my service using Chainlink, right? Chainlink's going to provide the data. You're not even going to see it. But you'll be able to connect. So this is the connection to the app, okay? So I'm using a peanut brain uh, message here. But this is how the future's going. This is Sergey's vision. Vision is the world not only becomes decentralized, but we actually put smart contracts there. And as well, we're going to take over DeFi. He's got that too. DeFi is like 100 trillion. We're going to get to over 10 trillion. We're going to hit 1 trillion first milestone, then 10 trillion, okay? That's his vision. We're literally doing everything better for everyone. So everyone wins, okay? I want you to know, right now, Uber, Uber, does not exist unless you have three infrastructure, okay? Uber only exists with Twilio. It also only exists with Twilio. Stripe, and it also only exists with Google Maps, okay? Google Maps, GPS, okay? GPS, All right? So Uber cannot be created unless you have Twilio. I think that's the messaging. I think that's messaging the driver and Stripe is actually paying the driver back and forth and Google Maps is telling the driver where to go. You, are, If you miss any of this infrastructure, you don't have Uber at all. It doesn't exist. So we're in 1999. I'm trying to tell you the world's going to change with the internet. I don't know how Uber's going to exist because I don't even know that this infrastructure is going to be made. Chainlink is this infrastructure, okay? Chainlink is like this Google Maps, all right? Think about all the apps in the future and today that need Google Maps right now. This is an important key part of infrastructure, okay? Me and you aren't going like, whoa, Google Maps maxis. We don't have Google Maps tattoos on our foreheads, okay? Maybe we should, because it's so important, okay? So this is what infra infrastructure is. Infrastructure, background, boring, okay? Edge, there's edge here. There is edge, okay? You can make memes out of most boring stuff, right? So if I started calling Chainlink the fourth industrial revolution and saying it's gone on $1,000, people are gonna buy it anyway, okay? So you can always change the narrative, okay? This is all comes down from Sergey's vision for Chainlink, the Oracle feeding you, making the world better. We get public goods, public data, okay? Envisioning the world, making it better. All of this comes from Sergey. Sergey has a vision, okay? That is his vision. His vision is we're gonna make the world smart. Right now, smart contracts are just contracts. Thanks to Vitalik, okay? He is now gonna be the third pillar. Okay, are you getting it? Where is Martin Shkreli? <laughs> are you getting it? Look at Martin here. He's no one. Look at <laughs> You gotta love the memes, man. You wanna have some fun, you go to the chain nick memes. Okay, so, Richard Hart. Controversial. We've got the hex chart here, okay? Richard Hart has core founding principles. Most people don't even know, okay? All you see him is just twerking on Twitter, okay? He has these principles. He tried to market them. Six people cared, okay? He starts twerking on Twitter, throwing out Rolex watches. 
he gets hundreds of thousands of followers, okay? So he's just like, well, the market's sending me a signal. This thing is out here. He always advises people to go here. You just don't listen. No one listens. But you're listening to me because I have this information, okay? He has written a book, 15 Ways to Fix the World. <clears throat> a YouTuber who's a hex scanner, Wild SJ, she actually narrates this. It goes for like five and a half hours, okay? He has so many different cool ideas. I'm like, wow. I haven't read all of it, but just one idea, which Australia already uses is, so America, you have a binary political system where you just vote for one guy, team red or team blue. In Australia, it's done by preferential voting. So you never pick one or two, you gotta pick all like eight, and you rank them. So ranked voting. And his log and the logic is, okay, if I hate someone and you hate someone, but one of them wins, it's gonna be chaos. But maybe me and you have a guy who's number three, and we're like, yeah, that guy's all right, you know, I don't mind him. I'm not, he's not number one, but he's like number three. And then what if everyone in the country picked number three? And I was like, yeah, he's about the average, right? So this is one solution that he's put in, put in his book. He also has a core founding principle for Hex, okay? So he has, Richard Hart has all these. This is why there's edge here. There's more to come with Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and all this other stuff, okay? He has his book, Sci Fi. Look, when you think of Hex, okay, remove the logo, remove the ticker, remove Richard Hart, remove the Rolexes here, okay? I want you to know, the founder believes, this coin founder, okay, believes in delayed gratification, okay? Believes in helping your fellow man, okay? Believes in also avoiding leverage trading, over, overly doing drugs, drinking too much, right? playing too much video games, okay? Wasting your life, okay? Believes we should get longevity research done to prolong human life, okay? So, remove the ticker. Remove the ticker. I know there's a lot of, animus, a lot of animosity. You're like, ah, ah, I can't see beyond it. Well, you're gonna see beyond it now, okay? If you wanna make money, you gotta see beyond it now. Put down your weapons. We're gonna listen. We're gonna, okay, drinking, okay? I want you to know this, so, before you even see a coin name, this is it, okay? This is it. He believes in delayed gratification. He believes that if you put stuff away for the future, you will make better decisions, right? And good things will come to you. And surprise, surprise, someone has helped this coin to go up. Gee, I wonder who, okay? Just think, just think, okay? Maybe there's a sign here. Maybe there's a common thing. He believes in helping your fellow man, okay? A lot of people in the Hex community do the conferences, they help each other, they're always streaming, providing free knowledge. Nobody charges for all these like super insider stuff. I don't charge for, when I do my blockchain analysis stuff, I don't go charge for any of it, I could. I go, oh, this guy's selling and this and that. I don't go charge for that, I don't care, man. I'm not, I'm here to help you. And everyone in the Hex community does too, okay? 95%. Remember, the bottom five in society, they're right off anyway. 95%, beautiful. Donating, helping with logos, with everything, okay. Believes in avoiding leverage trading, overly doing drugs, drinking, playing too much video games, wasting your life. So leverage trading is a big plague in the crypto industry because a lot of the people say, hey, your coin can go up, you just gotta leverage trade it. And, and they also say, oh, only leverage trade if you're gonna win and you should never do it, by the way. That's what they say, it's contradictory. It's like saying, hey, drink alcohol, but never get drunk. And you're like, okay, how realistic is that? You know you give it to 100 people, 20 people are gonna get drunk. You know that, right? You know, in leverage trading, it's worse, right? 99% of people who open up a leverage trading account have less money than what they started in 12 months. This is in the stock market, this is in futures, this is in crypto, okay? 99% have less money in 12 months than when they start, okay? I think it's really like 97%, but you get the point. N not even making this up. At 100 people, and they know this. You think they don't know this, right? So this is one of Richard's principles. He's like, hey, stop hurting people. Okay, last one. Believes we should get longevity research done. You know, donate to Sense Foundation, prolong your research. So you know, I'm not even telling you to buy this. I'm just telling you, like, he has core principles here, and they're strong, right? They're strong beliefs. Compare, like, Charlie's and Gavin's. They ain't that strong, right? So it's strong here, okay? So now we get to the critical issue. We can go to the coin ranking, right? And you can go through all the coins. Hex isn't even listed here. It's ranked 201, all right? On Nomics, they put it at rank 20, okay? So we've gone through all of this. I want you to now think, if you buy a coin, what are the core founders' principles behind it? You're always gonna think that now. 
If you don't even know, go do research. If there are none, you know you know that coin is just a car crash and it's never gonna be a religion, you know that. To be a religion, you gotta be super, super convicted and the, the leader has to be convicted. The leader can't stall once, one time. He can't even hiccup, okay? He can't say, oh, well, maybe we might be wrong. Nope, nope, never back down. Look at Donald Trump, did he ever back down? No, look at the following he got, okay? Core founders principles. You now have this knowledge, you go out there, find it, come bring it back to me. We're gonna win at this together. I love you all, friends.